So it's mid-October and all of our gardens are pretty much put to bed. Uh, the goats are kind of mad because they're running out of food, as you can hear. Um, but this is the area we were talking about. So here's our outhouse. Uh, here's the area we were talking about kind of at the beginning of the year. Uh, if you remember, I'll put a link kind of up here uh, to the video where I was saying we're going to clean up this whole area. Well, that didn't happen. Um, we got this area cleaned up. There's just some pieces of cardboard and rubber on the ground to kind of um, kill off, you know, to act like a mulch. So we planted uh, an annual garden right there. The soil texture was really good, but we didn't have much fertility. We brought in a little bit of chicken manure, a little bit of goat manure, um, and we worked it in. And we got some good squashes, some tomatoes, uh, a lot of beans from there. We also have another annual garden um, kind of over that way. That's like our wood pile, so it's just beyond our wood pile. Um, we have a bunch of asparagus crowns planted here. And this is the next project we're going to tackle. Uh, cleaning all that stuff up, the stuff that the loggers left, lots of giant trees. But um, what we want to talk about right now is, we, this is a bed that we had planted a bunch of potatoes in, in this area, and we had some squashes right here. Uh, and those, it, it did pretty well. Um, so now we've just planted some garlic right there. Uh, we're going to plant a little bit more right here, but it's a rainy day in October. We thought it was a good time to do this. Um, and also a lot of the leaves are fallen. So, you know, they're all falling off the, the trees basically. So it's still falling off of some of the brush. Uh, we had the goats fenced in. Um, kind of a fence went around this way, came around this way, and then we had them fenced in right over there too. So they ate a lot of the brushy leaves, uh, which is really good. And what we're doing now is we're taking all the the rotting logs that the, the loggers left, stuff like that, along with some of the brush. We used some of the brush for a wattle fence too. Um, maybe we'll see that in another video. But um, we're basically trying to manage all of this, this whole area, because uh, we still have to build a chicken coop for the winter, so it's probably gonna go over here and they'll have a small run here where they can eat the compost, because free range chickens are, are great, but uh, they're kinda, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to manage them. It's hard to find their eggs. Uh, stuff like that. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to make basically a small scale hugel mound. Um, we've got the rotting logs, uh, we're going to use some wood chips too, and we got a bunch of wood chips we're going to use, and um, yeah, and all this old moldy uh, mulch hay. So hopefully by next spring, uh, some of that, the snow pack will have turned some of that to soil, have rotted some of it, and we'll be able to plant you know, things like sunflowers or things that don't require too much nutrient, but also have uh, good root systems that can kind of start to break up some of this, you know, some of the woody stuff. We've seen sunflower, for instance, sunflower roots go right into, you know, like a, a rotten piece of log like that. They'll go right through that and they'll really start to break it up. So we're kind of, this is like a strategy that we've been employing throughout our whole property because there's a lot of stuff like this. It's not really great for firewood because it's been down on the ground. Some of it's good for firewood, so we take that, but a lot of it isn't. Um, and instead of just cutting it up and putting it in piles and burning it, uh, like we've been doing with some of the cedar, because some of the cedar that's not good to use for, you know, structural fences or shingles, uh, it'll take a long time to rot. So we have been burning some of that or using a little bit of, of it for firewood, and but um, yeah, and sugaring wood, yeah. Also, um, a lot of these logs are yellow birches, so they're microbial. So we're also gonna dabble a little bit with um, inoculating them with mushrooms. Some of them it might be a little hard because there's already some turkey tails and other funguses growing on them. That's good already. It shows that they're starting to break down. And not to mention the fact that we had a really bad drought. So this is going to hold water in our systems that we, we want. Um, that way the roots can access it and the logs themselves are kind of bordering it. Yeah, the logs will act as almost sponges. Uh, so when it rains and they start to really rot, um, so when stuff gets to like this texture, you know, it's, it almost acts like a sponge, uh, when it gets to this texture and, and more rotten, it'll act like a sponge. I don't know if you've ever been in the woods and you ever picked up a rotten log and you can kind of squeeze it in your hands and you can squeeze out the moisture. That's kind of what we're going for. Um, so that way, you know, if a drought comes further, any plants that are planted along these borders, uh, they'll have access to, to moisture and, um, and water basically. So, also, um, we're 
this system isn't like it's not written in text or anything. And we're using we say Hugel mounds, but really we're not we're not doing the exact Hugel mound method. We're just putting them on the ground. We're not digging up the ground. Um, instead of digging up soil, we're trying to build soil because we already have a lot of rocks and almost like shale near our house. Yeah, I mean, there's rock. There's a rock right there. There's I mean, there's stuff like that everywhere. I mean, when um, Michael and I were doing this, he was pulling out huge rocks. We have some bordering the the um, some rocks right there. We've got a lot of granite and shale. But we what we want to do is just mimic nature and kind of speed up the process of breaking down soil but also being able to utilize at the same time. We could leave these logs right where they are and let them rot, but we wouldn't see the um, the benefits in a few years, right? At least this way we can build up soil. It also keeps a barrier. If we do put our chickens back there, it'll kind of keep a buffer of them being away from it and seeing that that's a wall. Don't go over it. Right, and we can concentrate those benefits. So, you know, the rotting logs will add nutrients. Uh, like Shakoy said, if we just left them over here, um, that would add nutrients in soil too, but this way we can kind of concentrate them to one area um, and concentrate all that nutri uh, nu nutrient here. So we've got another uh, small scale Hugel mound. Uh, we, I guess we'll call them that because it's the same concept, but it's not exact nature the exact mounds. method. We'll call them nature yeah, so let's <laughs> go. Mounds. Let's go look at another wood mound that we've got um, a little bit further away. So we've got another mound right here. Um, this is. Right behind our house, there's our house. Uh, we've got, um, there's a really rotten log right here and another one fallen right there. So we figured instead of trying to dig it out of the soil, uh, leaving an impression and uh, figuring out what to do with it, uh, we put a bunch of stuff on that and created a mound. So this hill right here was all brush. Um, you can probably see it. I'll link to another video up here. You can probably see it in that video uh, of when we got here last fall. Um, this whole area, in fact, this whole area was all brush and brambles. So we've been working at trying to clear it in an ecological way. Uh, we don't want to just slash and burn um, kind of thing. So all this stuff that's down, that's all the stuff that the loggers left. So this there's a lot of that. Like that. That whole area. Right, there's a lot of that. And then so through that, brambles were growing. Raspberries, blackberries, uh, stuff like that. I mean, and the raspberries and blackberries are tasty, but it's, it's hard to get through that because they're really thorny. Um, usually six, six to eight to nine feet tall. Yes, we're gonna come down and see you in a second. Yeah, they're, the one, they're the workers that did all this and they probably know we're talking about them. <laughs> but also with the blackberries and brambles, yeah, it's food, but we wanna have more than just blackberries and brambles. We wanna be able to utilize the space is a south-facing slope to our house. We are going to take those trees down, unfortunately. Yeah, we've been we've been experiencing uh, really high winds, and they are shallow rooted. I mean, we could show you. Yeah, these firs they like to they, they root out like that and not like that, you know. So they they, they fall over a lot. There's a couple of them. Um, there's a clump right there. You can kind of see that fell over the other yeah, night. Yeah. yeah. So uh, anyway, off topic, but um, all this this this. Uh, debris we took and we put here on this mound and then topped it off with some a bunch of moldy hay uh, some goat hay from their bedding um, from their you know their pen and it's it's about I mean probably four feet high at this I point stand behind it and it's like waist high. yeah so that's that's behind it and then come stand in front of it so they can see how tall it is from this side too um, so yeah it's almost chest high for Shikoi. and also um, um we're not done with it. As, it. as it breaks down and it starts to, you know, lose its um, volume. Yeah, we're gonna top it with more hay, and because we're always gonna have chicken bedding and goat bedding and goat manure. Right. We're always gonna be growing food, so any vines of squashes or whatever we grow here will just be added to it. And exactly. Then the soil will be able to be spread, and then we'll be able to grow more. So let's go visit the goats and show them the other one too. Um, so this whole this whole uh, area they've they've cleared. We also inoculated the north side with mushrooms. Um, another experiment to see if that north side will start to break down its um, wine cap. So we put wood, fresh wood chips, maple and apple, and they're going to break down the back side and also provide right. food early. There's a little bit. Of, you might be able to see the wood chips. So this whole side, you know, is kind of the north-ish side. That's that's a shadier side. So hopefully the mushrooms will enjoy that shade and moisture. Also another part of rotating and ecologically managing the goats is that they leave pockets
pockets of nutrients everywhere they go. So they're fertilizing, they're building soil, um, grasses are starting to come in. These grasses were not right. here. Yeah, there's grasses. So that's the goal for this hillside is we're going to clean all this stuff up. Uh, hopefully some of this will get done before uh, winter, not all of it. This is a long-term project. Um, and right here there's a depression. You can kind of see that's kind of the, the shape of it. And these trees will come down because they're right near our house. We'll hopefully use some of them for sugaring wood, firewood, or uh, mill some of them for finished wood because uh, they're balsam firs, so they'll make some nice wood eventually. Um, and maybe we'll put a, maybe we'll put a small human scale pond right here and then utilize the rest of this space. Hopefully it'll be, it'll get grassier and, um, this is a south facing hillside. So we'll use this, you know, for growing food, whether it's perennials or, uh, annuals or whatever. So we're going to walk down to the goat yard. We do have some chestnuts already planted out. These are on their third, fourth year. Third or fourth year. Yeah. Those are, these are Chinese chestnuts. So these will start to. Um, nut out soon. <laughs> so here's another area that uh, we basically had the goats munch all the leaves of the um, the leaves of the brush and then we came with a, a brush cutter it's just a weed whacker with a blade on it and uh, we cut it all down and then we raked it all up and stacked on this so you can see there's a there's a big rotten log um, and we you know just kept adding moldy hay to it. So this this is the first one that we made. And this is compressed quite a bit um, from the rain and all that. So, uh, you know, we'll add more to it maybe before the end of the year. And come next spring, we'll plant stuff into it. We're not sure what yet, but the goal is to have things that, you know, are low maintenance. We don't, we're not going to plant tomatoes in here because um, they probably wouldn't like it that much. So, you know, things that are low maintenance, so maybe things like flowers or uh, edible, um, you know, ornamental plants, things that, that don't really require a lot of fuss. They, they can just grow and grow and grow, um, and preferably annuals because we want to des design, um, we want to carefully design what, peren uh, what perennials that we want to put in here because those will be more permanent aspects. So um, that's going to take... really close to the goat yard and they like to munch. Yeah, so you know when we're when we're letting them out of here, that's Poncho. <laughs> so when we're letting them out of here and putting them into their fence, their rotational pastures, that's you know they'll probably munch on some stuff right out here before we can get them there. So um, this is Della Rose. She's our doe. Hey there. And this is Poncho. He's our aggressive buck right now because he's you know territorial and full of testosterone. So we'll, she'll she'll kid this spring. And we'll have a couple more probably goats. Um, one goat is not really, one kid is not really normal. It's usually two or three, sometimes four. Um, so um, Something I wanted to mention is uh, all the animals we have on our homestead or on our farm, um, they have a purpose if we don't just have them just because. I mean, that would be nice, but they're mouths to feed and that's not something we want to afford. Right, so, so our goats. Yeah. They, they act as the brush cutters of the farm because we, we bought 12 acres of logged land and everything that comes back is, you know, you can see this, this brush back here, uh, more back there. There's a lot of brush. So they've done an, an amazing job getting all the brush out. Not only brush, but um, they will pro she'll, she'll provide milk next year, um, which will provide products like soap making, yogurt, milk for our poppies, things to be a little bit more self-sufficient. Um, our chickens, obviously they lay eggs, they're also food, but they also do kick up and they provide manures for our gardens. Right, even uh, Coda, Coda here serves a purpose. He's a good, he's, a, he's an amazing guard dog for the property and he, he alerts when there's predators and he also, his presence keeps away predators. So he marks his territory he everywhere. He and where to pee. Right, he pees down here all the time because right down this way is a swamp. So we get, we get, you know, things like fisher cats and raccoons and foxes and all that. So that's just a small tour of, uh, you know, our ecological management via hugel mounds, you know, small scale hugel mounds. And we'll probably do a lot more with stuff like this. I mean, if you see all this is just debris that they left down, um, trees that they had knocked down or cut down and they just kind of left them. So it's, you know, it's, it's sad, but. In the same sense, there's opportunities to be had. Um, fertility to be 
accessed and unlocked and also space to grow. Um, a lot of people would look at this and they'd just say, well, take a bulldozer to it or, you know, just just let it do its thing or burn it all or whatever. Um, that's not the avenue that we want to take. Uh, Our mission um, for what we're doing for Sacred Circle is to, um, you know, live in harmony with the land, but also be able to provide food for ourselves and systems of animals and not a, for all living beings. And we don't create healthful to, ecosystems. Yeah, we don't want to take more than we deserve, but we don't want to just neglect the land and just leave it to be neglected and what had been done to it. So heal it, utilize it. And live we live with it, exactly. And we want to create some healthful ecosystems. Um, another small Hugo Mound going to be started right here. You know, maybe we'll, maybe this, this will be kind of a, a terrace or something. We're not sure yet. So there's a lot to unlock, um, a lot to do. And uh, we've got a lot of time to do it. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.